Hello there, everybody. My name is Kaylin Ferris, and this is part three of my Japanese linguistical video series. And in today's video, we will be talking about Middle Japanese. Now, I will be discussing both early Middle Japanese and late Middle Japanese. So, we'll be expanding a long period of time. So, from about the late Nara period to the early Heian period, there was a simplification of Manyogana occurred. And it ultimately resulted in the development of hiragana and katakana. All hiragana and katakana derive from a specific kanji and became phonograms for them. So hiragana derived from the cursive writings of manyogana, while katakana came from specific parts of manyogana in certain scripts. However, in the very beginning, hiragana was mostly used by women who were excluded from learning classical Chinese and Chinese characters. But as a result, we ended up coming up with amazing female authors during this time that created such tales like Genji Monogatari. Hiragana was very practical for writing running texts, akin to English cursive, as strings of letters could be written without lifting the brush from the paper, and it was deemed aesthetically pleasing. I guess others were aesthetically pleasing, but I mean, mine just looks like flat chicken scratch. It was also during that this time period that these little symbols called dakuten and handakuten were utilized to express the change of sound in the kana. So, for example, from ka to ga, hi to pi, or bi. Hakuten specifically was created by the P Portuguese Jesuit missionaries in the 16th century. It was first used in Raku Yoshu, a kanji dictionary published by these Jesuit priests in Amakusa. And then by modern Japanese, the hakuden, handakuden, and dakuden were fully integrated. So the greatest change from old Japanese, middle Japanese, was the loss of the nominal form from examples kakaku and akuaku. So in early middle Japanese, um, the shimo ichidan conjugation class appeared with only one word, kue, which means to get. I think that was pretty fun. And as also a class of verb nouns originated in early modern Japanese, particularly with the recent intake in the Sino Japanese loan words. And also adjectival nouns like Shibuka or Shizuka have emerged as a separate word class. It was during this time period that a lot of old Japanese auxiliaries went out of use, but two important ones. Um, emerge, which were sase and rai, which were the causative auxiliary and the passive auxiliary, respectively. So, going back a little bit, the Middle Japanese era was heavily influenced by the Chinese language, and so we see these Sino Japanese loan words emerge, such as uh, kao or ko, which is fragrance, which is now known as kori. Um, and you can especially see this in the in the various texts like Genji Monogatari, but what also came to light during this period was Kanbun and Kundoku, or the interpretation and translation of classical Chinese texts to Japanese, so people were able to understand Chinese classics in the vernacular. Likewise, Kunten, or little annotations to Chinese texts, were added so it could aid um, the Japanese rendition, and it came in two classes. The uh, kana glasses and okutokuten. As we proceed towards the late Middle Japanese period, we see more Portuguese and Dutch influence come via the missionaries. As a result, um, Heiki Monogatari and Aesop no Fabulous or Aesop Fables were translated from Latin to Japanese. Phonetic wise, we see changes to the long vowel sound, so we get that signature e and Back to grammar, as we get to the late Middle Japanese period, the only surviving category from early Middle Japanese is the imperative tense. A lot of remaining auxiliaries were either lost or changed from auxiliary to flexive, and the only one truly to remain was the negative auxiliary, which remains to modern Japanese. A big stepping stone during late modern Japanese was the establishment of polite language, it originated in exalting expression, you know, by shifting the target of respect and humility. And thus, in modern Japanese, we have humble and respectful forms and conjugations. Uh, particle-wise, 
ga gained an additional usage as a conjugational particle. And that's all we got from particles during this time. So, moving on. Thanks to these wonderful Portuguese missionaries, an influx of loan words have come to Japan. A handful of these loan words are still here today. For example, tempura and pan. Tempura we know as the, you know, battered and deep fried fish and veggies. And pan, well, you might recognize that from Spanish, means bread. But we also got a few more loan words from Sanskrit um, showing up in a Middle Japanese text was naraku, which comes from the Sanskrit word naraka, which is hell. And then Buddha, which is Buddha. And that, folks, is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. Stay tuned to our finale, which we will be talking about modern Japanese, which is not as modern as you think.